guys, today's speculation video is going to be on the songstress. We saw her art for her ruler side revealed uh, yesterday and it's going to be shown today. I wanted to be able to get this out because I have so much going on for her that I like want to be right so desperately bad. Um, you might be wondering what all these cards are but my speculation for this is just really really hard because there's so much water has done in variety and I don't know which one I want to focus on. Um, the reason why Valentina is here and all the Shangri-La cards are here, of course, is because the songstress is trying to defeat Valentina for betraying um, Shangri-La. She's from Shangri-La and she's um, Valentina's like right-hand woman. Um, I, I, in my story video, I showed that when Alice first uh, came to Shangri-La and she was trying to meet with uh, Valentina before we knew Valentina was like evil or whatnot, uh, the person who lets um, Alice in and Valentina like orders, you know, okay, like if she's beautiful, you can let her in, is a woman named Shion or Shion. It's a S H I O N, um, and that is who the songstress is. It's been confirmed that they're the same person. So essentially, um, I'm seeing her as like this, like kind of like the woman that just stands next to Valentina while she's on her throne, and she like orders her to do like her bidding and like bring her drinks and play her music and stuff. But of course. Um, Valentina is very picky of who she surrounds herself with and um, we see that in that art the songstress is absolutely beautiful she's like in a bar and she's singing and there's all these people with like holding their like beer cups in the sky or um, just kind of partying to her singing and her like like uh, I'll put the link in the description below so you guys can see the picture but her like dress is like absolutely beautiful I know that's like weird to say but like it really is like I've never seen she reminds me a lot about Hera like Hera is like just drawn so like gorgeously like the art on that card is absolutely beautiful the details in her clothes and her hair everything is just so on point and um i i, I saw the same in the songs just her art just completely blew me away and it's it's really exciting because there's so many different angles you can take on blue um the first one i'm kind of leaning towards is like this uh resting ability i was looking at cards like hamlin and invasion um ghost ship uh we've always seen blue kind of controlling resting Moonjart the six age uh does this as well and I was thinking maybe it'd be really, really cool to give her some ability that's kind of like pay one blue and one colorless on her J ruler side to like rest a target J slash resonator. And then like it just doesn't recover as long as she's phased up on the field. So you would have to like find an out to her without um, being able to use your J ruler if they're on the field. The only problem I see with this is... Of course, they wouldn't be able to tap for stones, which is like a little too strong if they deactivate too early. Of course, that would mean that they would have to go into um, kind of playing against you once they see their, your ruler side and they know you're playing songstress and they know that's your J ruler side. It would, of course, have to change their strategy. So it wouldn't be like too unfair because you could just, you know, control when you plan to deactivate and maybe just push for uh, damage before she could control the board. Um, or it might even be something like, you know, uh, pay one blue, one colorless. And of course, that would be an activate. So you can argue that people that are playing the primogenitor can also uh, negate that with his effect but it could be like you know your opponent's j slash resonator doesn't recover unless they pay one void or something like that so it wouldn't be like a permanent thing it would just be you know try to control the board uh keep as much things tapped as you can um i'm leaning more towards her effect being kind of like a wi uh, wide variety because you see that she's holding a violin um bow in her hand in her j ruler art that's on the insert box once again, if I talk about any like specific art or anything, I'll have everything in the description below so you guys can check it out. But um, she's holding a bow for a violin, so I'm really strongly believing that her regalia is going to be a violin. And of course, when it comes to music, um, it, it's, it's a blanket thing. I mean, everyone can hear it. Everyone can be affected by it. And judging by her ruler art with all the, the bar guys in the background just kind of having a great time, it might be where her effect is something about like inspiring the masses. So it's like your whole field might gain like a huge buff of like plus five plus five or um you know your opponent loses like minus something minus something at, you know if she pays a certain cost because uh the music they hear is affecting them in a negative way uh that's always a possibility as well we've seen bouncing uh with water as well there's also swordsman of the full moon that does that i'm thinking it'd be cool if she can kind of control how many resonators are on the board by bouncing them but we did just have that in reflex so i didn't know how strongly we would see that there's always like draw power cards um, like uh, the Trader of Shangri-La where you kind of scry the way you would with Reflect or just like cards like Forcey and stuff that let you draw a bunch of cards. That's always a really big possibility too. But I feel like we saw that with Valentino 1.0 where, uh, you know, you can keep a really big hand, use cards like Shangri-La that is a buff card once again would kind of work really great with uh, Songstress if that was her angle. And um, But I feel like we've already seen that so I, I'm really expecting something new. 
uh, I I'm, I was also leaning towards maybe everything having untargetable because I looked at something like Valentina Zilot, but then I feel like that would kind of make Alice Saint kind of um, outclassed, and especially because they're in the same cluster, I feel like that's a little just um, it, it, it works against each other. If it was like an old ruler, and you can argue that once you know the Grim cluster rotates out, we'll have something similar to that. It wouldn't be so bad, but I feel as though with the fact that you know. Alice Saint can give your whole field untargetable with her god art. It's kind of too much if uh, Songstress did the same thing. So I don't know how that's going to go. Um, moving and the Overlord's Invasion Party also kind of goes with the whole Shangri La idea of, you know, just buffing and having like big monsters. That's a really big possibility as well. But I really, I want to say that this is like what is she's going to do for sure. But I'm scared of what that would do to the game because we already see that the Primogenitor um, slows Regalias down. But the perfect counter to Valentina lore-wise of this, you know, overpowered overlord that has all these regalias would, of course, to be to nullify her regalias or, like, destroy them. And looking at a card like Hera, how I said she reminds me along a lot of the songstress, I think it would be absolutely insane if, like, Valentina's effect is, of course, like, pay one blue, one colorless to search a regalia from your deck. Imagine if, like, songstress was just pay one blue, one colorless, or one blue, one two colorless to just destroy a regalia. Or if she enters the field, destroy all regalia on the field. I, I, in a way, it seems like it would be too much because that's like a huge blanket effect like Hera, but on the whole board. But at the same time, if you play against it, you can use your uh, regalias accordingly. You can not drop all of them from your hand all at once and kind of hold the ones you want in your hand. Maybe bait her out and then drop some more and then um, try to, you know, control her that way. It would be an interesting concept and it would be a really kind of cool way to play in my opinion. And then... Uh, looking at Glepnir, I was thinking that's the only other regalia that kind of like I feel does something to the opponent's cards the way the violin might because they like listen to the music or whatnot. Um, Glepnir, of course, forces your opponent's monster to block. I was thinking maybe the violin could be, you know, you pay the, the actual regalia cost would be like zero, but you can maybe like pay one void and tap it. And then like all resonators your opponent controls can't block a target card you control. That would be a really good way for water to push in some damage. That would be a really interesting concept as well. It would kind of be like they're all distracted by the music and they can't, you know, stop the certain card from attacking. I I strongly feel that she's going to be something with to do with J rulers. I feel like she kind of has to be this in between that can kind of control the flow of battle. I just feel as though with uh, Primogenitor being so strong and Kaguya being so good, th those rulers are just so incredible. Um, we can always assume that the red ruler is going to be something that has to do with damage, something that has to do with speed. Uh, even though uh, Jordan did say that, you know, the red's not going to be just burning aggressive this format, um, I can't really think of too much other than maybe these really big bodies as well that they can add. And then with um, the Eudrasio tree ruler, uh, I'm really anticipating, just like how Matt Cosmore said, that the ruler side is going to be the new Alice we saw in the Primogenitor um, flavor text, and the tree will be like the Jactivate side. And I feel like it's going to be some like ultimate mana fixing ruler that just makes you play like a really strong main deck. I don't think it's going to have to do anything with J ruler specifically, but I could see Songstress being being like a minion of Valentina. I could see her like learning the manipulative ways, and she wouldn't be like evil about it, but she would just be informed. And I could see her having effects that would you know. Uh, control J rulers and like, you know, rest them at will or make them unblockable at will or maybe like make them unable to deactivate at some crazy cost or uh, force them to not be able to deactivate for like a couple turns. I don't know what the possibilities are, but I really don't feel like she's just going to be like all oh, resonators gain plus two plus two. Like that would be so bland and we've seen that in uh, uh, Fairy Alice's God Art anyway. Um, I'm really excited to see the other blue cards that come with it as well because there's just so much that blue I feel needs. Hera was like the only card that's been released in like a pretty long time for blue that I could just think of off the top of my head. That's just completely game changing for the color. Um, I'm sure there's other ones like, I mean, of course, Cheshire has always been a thing as well, but but Hera was the first one that was like, you know, I'm going to plus two right now and have a body. Oh, um, Adam Brawley also is absolutely amazing. That card is so relevant, like in everything. It's just such a great card. And those two are like the only water cards that ever come to mind. So I can't wait to kind of add to that pool of like really useful water cards. Cards that people are willing to splash blue in for just because it's so good. The way we use, you know, green for counter spells and red for like all the aggro. I want blue to have that thing where people are like, I need this because it provides me with this much. And even if it's a full blue deck with Songstress or you can mix it with another color, maybe she's kind of like a control ruler Um, in, in uh, games like Magic. Um, there's a card called Force of Will, and it lets you discard 
a blue color card and um I'm, I'm i haven't played magic much but like I'm, I'm pretty sure the effect is something like this i hope i'm not wrong but essentially it's like you activate it or just discard it from your hand with another blue card and it negates a spell or uh, i think a summon as well but essentially the idea is like how we have zeke's and uh cake zone and stuff at the cost of just you know using mana the blue source in that game just counter spells with cards that counter spell cards like force of will and um, they have a really heavy um, negation thing too. And I don't think that would be too strong for blue. I mean, if we got a J ruler that said, you know, you can discard a blue resonator or a blue spell because we don't, we really don't have a lot of blue spells either. So it wouldn't like be an overwhelming amount of targets, uh, but it would be like, you know, you can pay one blue and discard a blue spell to negate counter, you know, negate target summon or something. That would be pretty cool. I mean, even if it's on her J ruler side, so it's not like too blanket all the time, that might be a problem. But I think that would be really cool. I mean, you can argue that it, it would, you know, leave her at a disadvantage at times because you're discarding cards, but then blue draws a lot of cards. So that's really interesting too. Um, I'm just more, I'm really interested to see how her violin's gonna play. I really hope it is her regalia and that she actually has one. It would be kind of lame to like just have that in her art and not show it off but of course in her ruler art because she's singing it might not be uh too focused upon that you know she specifically has an instrument uh we do see the bow but once again you, you never know so uh let me know what you guys think i can't wait for 10 o'clock oh for anyone that doesn't know uh the spoilers are always like at 10 p.m uh well west, west coast time anyway i'm from la so uh that's the time that i check it out but if it says like tuesday and friday uh, uh we get it like monday 10 p.m and thursday 10 p.m so today at 10 p.m uh west coast time or should i guess be 1 a.m east coast time and then whatever the in between might be i guess um 12 uh, midnight so make sure you guys check it out uh i hope i'm right uh leave a comment saying what you guys think it is i can't wait to hear everyone's opinion and if you guys haven't subscribed yet make sure you do because i have a ton of more speculation videos coming a bunch of deck profiles once the set actually drops uh it's gonna be really exciting i'm really excited for the next set and I will definitely catch you guys next time.